Hi everyone, my name is Sky, and I'm from Makeup Artistry by Sky Drake. I'm here today with the Melton Learning Directory to teach you some cool tips and tricks for how to paint your face for Halloween. Today I'm going to teach you how to paint your face like a skeleton. I'm also going to teach you how to make some cool edible fake blood with things that you probably already have in your kitchen. And I'm also going to teach you how to make a fake wound with toothpaste. Now for today's skull makeup, all you need is white and black face paint. I'm using the brand Cryolin, but you can just buy the little face paints that are available anywhere you can purchase them. I know you can get them from the reject store and I know you can also get them from Kmart as well. You will just need the white and black face paint, a makeup sponge to apply the white paint all over your face like I'm doing right here. You need a small brush, a medium brush and a black eyeliner pencil. Now here I'm just applying the white makeup all over my face. I'm blending that onto my ears as well, make sure not to miss the ears. I'm not worrying too much about my eye area because that will just be filled in black later on with the black paint. And I'm also not worrying too much about how perfectly covered the white paint is either. This is a Halloween makeup, it can be a little bit messy and fun. So I'm just patting it into my skin here now, I avoided my neck for today, uh, just simply because I'm not wearing it as a full costume for the day. I'm not filming on Halloween. But if you were to wear it as a full costume, I would recommend blending it all the way down your neck as well to bring it all together. You can also get black hairspray, which is fun to use on your hair, and you can blend the paint into your hairline as well to make it a full look. Now, as I finish up my blending here, I've picked up the black eyeliner pencil and all I'm going to do is do a basic trace of the outline of where I want the black sockets of my eyes to be. Now, it doesn't matter if you get this perfect or not, because you'll see later on, we're blending out the outer edges anyway. So it's just basically giving you an outline to make it easier to follow when you fill in with the black. Now here I'm filling in the outline of my jaw. And you can see I have to go back a couple of times to perfect this just because it wasn't quite in the shape that I wanted. But you can make it in whatever shape feels right to you. Just make sure you keep checking back to make sure that the sides are symmetrical too. So I'm just filling in, tracing out the outline of the pencil here. And making sure that it's perfect, checking each side. And I'm also going to just draw the lines of where I want the nose to be too. Now this isn't completely anatomically correct, but it's just a bit of a fun Halloween look. Now I'm going to trace out the outline of the teeth. Now the teeth, you can take them as far into the jawline as you want. I'm not taking them too far into the jawline today because I'm keeping it as simple as possible. And I'm just filling in the outline of these so that later on it's easier to fill them in. Now I'm just having a good look, making sure that everything is lining up here. And once that is done, we're going to take our black face paint and our medium sized brush. And we're just going to start filling in. Now with the brush, make sure it's loaded up with a nice amount of product. So it's easy for you to keep painting and make a nice clean line there as well. Now, once again, if you do make a mistake or you do make it bigger than it needs to be or smaller than it needs to be or a little bit messy, that's totally fine because we're just going to blend it in later as well. Now, with the brush that you're using, the medium sized brush, you can use a paint brush, you can use a makeup brush, uh, you can use a hobby brush. And just as long as it's easy enough for you to have enough control to fill in your eye area. Now, because this is face paint, it is made for your face, but just be really careful when you're around the eyes that you don't get it inside of your eyes because that can sting. If you do get it in your eyes, make sure you stop straight away and rinse out your eyes with water. Now here I'm just filling in around the edges. I'm going to the other side.
Now I'm just going back in with that medium brush and the black paint and filling in where my jawline is. Now here you can see the white paint is blending in a little bit of the black paint to make it a little bit grey, which is okay because we'll go back over it with black later on. Now another great tip if you are going to a Halloween party or you need your makeup to last a really long time is to go back over the white with powder before you start to do the outlines. And another great option is to go over the black when you're finished filling it in with the paint and cover it with black eyeshadow. This also makes it a little bit darker and it helps with the longevity of the makeup as well. So it helps it to last a lot longer. So here I'm just filling it in, bringing it down a little bit further so that it matches in. And making sure that I get the shape that I want. Going into the nose area with the medium brush and the black paint. Now this was a little bit hard with the medium sized brush and you can use a smaller brush if you like to get that detail of that nose in there too. And I'm going back in with my black pencil and I'm just going to be filling in the lines of the teeth a little bit more. Now you can make your teeth whatever shape you want. You can make as many as you like. You can make them as big or as small as you like as well. What I'm doing here also is if I make any mistakes, I'm not worrying about it too much because as you see later on, we go back in with the white paint and we fix up any mistakes and make the teeth stand out a little bit more as well. Now I'm extending up the black of the pencil liner because I'm representing the tooth's root here as well, just to make it that little bit more anatomically correct. <laughs> Now I'm just drawing a little bit of a line to create a sort of a crease in the forehead area of the skull and taking a blending brush and just blending it in to create a little bit of a shadow there. Now I'm going in with the blending brush and as I said before you don't need to worry too much about the edges of the black paint being perfect because we're just blending them out to make them soften up and to give them a little bit more dimension too. Now I'm going around the outer edges of the eyes to create a little bit of a shadow. And here I start to get a little bit too much black product on my brush, so I wipe it off on some paper towel. You can do this at any moment if you're getting too much product in there because you don't want to make it too much bigger than your original shape. Now I'm blending it onto the ears a little bit here. You can take the black all the way over the ears if you like and into the hairline as well. I'm darkening up the crease a little bit so it stands out a little bit more. And I'm also creating a little bit of a shadow around my forehead as well. Now I'm taking a smaller brush and I'm just going to create the shadow around the nose area. Now I'm blending that a little bit to make it seem a little bit more realistic. Now if you like the makeup before the blending, you don't have to use the blending. I just like to use it to make a little bit more of a realistic look. Now I'm just going back in with that small brush and a little bit of the black paint to make the line of the teeth stand out a little bit more.
and creating a little bit more of a shape with the teeth as well. Here I'm just blending out the edges a little bit more as well into the rest of the jawline. And I've made a little bit of a mistake. So I'm going back in with my small brush and I'm using the white paint and I'm just going to create a little bit more detail here. Make the teeth stand out a little bit more and fix any little mistakes that I make. Now you can also go around the rest of the face and fix up any of the edges if you want it to be extra crisp and perfect. Using the white paint is a really great way to fix up any little mistakes you might have made. It also helps to make pieces of the makeup stand out even more as well. And there we go, we're all finished. <laughs> now here we are making the fake blood. All you need for this is a chocolate sauce, golden syrup and red food dye. So here for the first blood, I'm just using the chocolate sauce, about a tablespoon of that into a container. And I'm taking a quarter teaspoon of the red food dye and adding that to the mix too. Now, because you are using food dye here, it can stain things. So please be careful when you are adding the dye and when you're also playing with the fake blood too, as it can stain. On skin, it's easily washed off with soap and water but if it was to get onto any sort of materials that are easily absorbed, then just be careful because it might be permanent. So here I am just mixing this with a teaspoon and this blood is a darker color and a thick consistency. So you could call that an old fake blood. Now here I'm just making sure that I'm not spilling it everywhere. And you can see it is quite a nice thick consistency. Now I'll be using this blood later in the fake wound that I'm creating. And you can see here it has stained my hand a little bit, but it is easily removed. Now the second blood that we're going to create is with golden syrup. And we're just taking a tablespoon of that into the same tablespoon. And with this, it's actually quite good to mix the golden syrup with a little bit of the chocolate sauce to make it a little bit darker. And we're adding the quarter teaspoon again of the food dye. And this is a little bit of a thinner consistency and it would, it's what we would call a fresh blood. Now the cool thing about this is because it is a thinner consistency, you can use it to splatter. Just be careful what you're splattering it onto. Now with both of these, they are delicious and they are very much edible, but just be careful around your eyes because we don't want that getting into your eyes at all. So you can see here, it is just a thin, fresh red fake blood. Now I'm going to put these aside for later and for the next part of this video where we make the fake wound. Now for the fake wound, all you need is white toothpaste, some red face paint and some foundation with a couple of little brushes. Now here I've just put a dollop of the toothpaste onto a clean hand and I'm just patting it in with the edges of my finger to create the shape of a raised wound. Now I'm just blending it down to smooth it out as smooth as possible, going around it making sure that I leave that raised part in the middle that you can see there. It's a little bit of height to it. And I am taking a small brush and I'm just running it down the middle to create that fake cut look. I'm just wiping off any excess I get on the brush. And then I'm just going to make a little bit of a raised edge as well. Now this may take a little while to get the shape and consistency that you're wanting from it. If you're wanting more of an open wound, you can have it more open. With this, it does take up to 30 minutes to dry, but if you use a hairdryer, you can dry it a lot quicker. So once it is all dry to the touch, I'm taking my foundation and a blending brush, and I'm just putting that around the edges, 
being very gentle because it is still a little bit soft when it has dried. So I'm just blending the foundation in. Get a foundation that is as close to your natural skin color as possible. Here I've chosen one that was perhaps a little bit too dark, but I'm making it work. So make sure you test the foundation on your skin before you put it onto your hand and then you just blend it in with the foundation brush. And this is just to create more of a realistic look. I'm taking the small brush and the red face paint and filling in the center of that cut there just to add a little bit of dimension, a little bit of color. Now the best part about creating a fake wound is you can be as messy as possible because when you get a cut in real life, it's never perfect. Here I'm taking that same small brush and dipping into that thick fake blood that we made earlier on. And I'm just placing that in the middle of the wound there. And then I'm taking some of that fresh light blood and I'm just placing that onto the wound and making it a little bit messy. Now you can add as much blood as you like or as little blood as you like. And I'm just adding a little bit of redness around the edges of the cut and as much blood to make it seem more realistic too. And there you go, a fake wound with toothpaste. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're looking for more fun and creative things to do, go and check out the Melton City Council's YouTube channel. Thanks.